ओके हाय सॉरी आई फॉर इट्स अ लाइव वीडियो तो मैं बोल भी सकती हूँ uh, बोल के भी पूछ सकती हूँ कि आप लोगों को आवाज़ uh, आ रही है सबको आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू वेट लाइक फॉर अ मिनट एंड देन मे बी स्टार्ट और आई कैन एक्चुअली जस्ट स्टार्ट नाउ ओके सो let me just open my notes um okay so my name is zinia rasool um i did my mphil in modern south asian studies from uh the university of cambridge um my dissertation was on pashtun identity um so the racialization of pashtun identity and um um the pakistan state right um and i'll be talking more about that so this this study circle is basically on my um dissertation um so apologies um i might ramble on too much and i might get into a bit um too much detail it's not too much unnecessary detail i think it is necessary detail to really understand ke pashtun identity ko construct kis tarah gaya tha aur wo baad mein uski continuation किस तरह हुई थी पाकिस्तान द पोस्ट पोस्ट कलोनियल पाकिस्तान स्टेट के अंदर स्टार्टिंग ऑफ आई जस्ट वांट टू रियली अपॉलोजाइज सबसे पहले कि मेरी मैंने जब पहला ये स्टडी सर्कल इस्लामाबाद ने भी किया था मैंने सबको कहा था कि मैं काफ़ी शर्मिंदा हूँ इस बात पे कि मेरी उर्दू हालांकि ठीक है मैं बोल सकती हूँ लेकिन मेरी वोकेबलरी इतनी अच्छी नहीं है तो जो एकेडेमिक टर्म्स हैं मैं मुझे उसकी uh, उसके उर्दू वर्ड्स नहीं आते तो आई थिंक आई बी स्टिकिंग टू इंग्लिश आई बी स्विचिंग बिटवीन बोथ लैंग्वेजेस टू मेक श्योर दैट देर इज नॉट अ लॉट ऑफ एकेडमिक जारगन के इतने मैं कोई लफ्ज़ ना इस्तेमाल करूं जो कि लोगों को समझ ना आ सके um, पहली बात दूसरी बात आई फॉर गॉड असलम एवरी वन सालोमीना एंड हाई टू ऑल दोज हु स्पीक इंग्लिश सो स्टार्टिंग ऑफ Uh, my dissertation was basically on um, like i said it was on knowledge production of the pashtun identity so i basically looked at um colonial um uh colonial and colonial india right and i looked at how colonial officials constructed this whole um um idea of who a pashtun was and uh, came up with definitions ke pashtun jo hai wo kis tarah ka ek insaan hai kis tarah ki ek identity hai aur um, ye isliye nahi kiya gaya tha kyunki unko waise koi dilchaspi thi hamare andar um, knowledge was primarily uh, used by states to um then some to then base their policy making on that knowledge production right so this knowledge was constructed for the sake of for sake of policy making and this is really important to understand kyunki um usse hame ye phir waze hote hai ki knowledge phir jis tarah jis tarah ka jis tarah ki direction bhi leti thi it was according to the kind of policies that these people wanted to implement on us right so the kind of relations um, or alliances or maybe even um, uh, dominance they they wanted on us um to knowledge basically uske accordingly dekhi jati thi so this was so uh, mostly uh, the public sphere was looked at they didn't really care about um, our culture Uh, about culture or the private sphere or the private sphere where there were a lot of um, actors who were also contributing to uh, identity making right so for example women uh, women are do not um, are completely invisible in colonial texts on pashtun identity right because colonial officials were not interested in what women represented more than Uh, and they were more interested in how men would retaliate to their rule right um and i'll 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 elaborate more on that a little bit but i i basically looked at how this was then translated into policy making and policy making mein jab wo aa gayi ye um um ek identity ki definition to policy making ke andar wo sirf institutionalized nahi hui lekin at the same time wo cement bhi ho gayi so basically identity was fixed in time then and it couldn't be um and it was it, it wasn't dynamic anymore in terms of how people started thinking about it ye jo sara kaam kiya gaya tha ye jo documents the ye jo newspapers the ye jo kitabein likhi gayi thi pashtuns ke upar iske upar baad mein phir academics ne aur aur bhi officials ne build up karna shuru kar diya tha so 
the problem with, with that was that these texts were because they were such little texts on Pashtun identity that these texts that were available out, out there, right, and these documents that were exchanged between these officials, they were seen as absolute facts, right? They were seen as the word of God. It was seen as like uh, proper um, factual work on who on who the Pashtun is. Now, the problem with that is that is pure narrative ke andar, what was essentially missing was the Pashtun's narrative of the Pashtun narrative of what they considered themselves, right? So the Pashtun counter narrative to this narrative and also the Pashtun narrative of self-identity, um, that was completely missing from these texts, right? And uh, that had a lot to do with power dynamics, that had a lot to do with, with power relations, that had a lot to do with access as well, right? Um, to, to, for example, uh, corridors of power where they could publish their identity or their identity on their own thoughts they could be um, popularized. Kar sakte the. And because these officials were in power essentially, they, they basically had the say on uh, how the Pashtun would be seen and who the Pashtun truly was. Um, now that was me rambling. Um, and then I basically looked at how this continued in terms of not just knowledge, uh, knowledge production, uh, uh, instead of knowledge, he continued in the Pakistan state, ke andar, lekin because knowledge was so tied to um, administration and policy making and governmentality. So the mentality of, of the government, um, ye Pakistan state ke andar in dono cheezo ki saath saath continuity hui. Um, and I basically drew parallels between both regimes, right? Um, and that basically brings into question how how post-colonial the colonial um, how post-colonial Pakistan actually is, or whether it's st still stuck in in a very much um, in in a colonial past, right? Um, okay, Urdu mein jitna bol sakun, I apologize. Um, achha, to, जो सबसे बड़ा एक जो जहां से ये स्टार्ट एक स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट था कि पश्तून आइडेंटिटी को डिफाइन करने का वो माउंट स्टुअर्ट माउंट स्टुअर्ट एल्फिनस्टोन की किताब थी कॉल्ड एन अकाउंट ऑफ द किंगडम ऑफ काबुल ठीक है ये um, 1815 में छपी थी एल्फिनस्टोन um, जो थे ही वाज बेसिकली लीडिंग अ डेलीगेशन ब्रिटिश डेलीगेशन वो लीड कर रहे थे um, उस टाइम में 1808 में जो कि um, Afghanistan mein ruler the Shah Shuja unke paas. Elphinstone jab aaye, wo aaye the as an ally. At that point in time, um, the British weren't looking to expand. They were looking to form, uh, to forge alliances and to form alliances with these people, right? So that naturally meant that they had an equality ka relationship, a um, um, companionship ka relationship, a forge a relationship. Karna cha rahe the. And because of that, because of how the British was viewing these people in terms of policy making, um, उनकी जो उनकी जो perception भी थी पश्तून की वो बहुत different थी uh, वो uh, जिन words में वो थी those words were very kind they were seen as equals they were, they were seen as potential allies they were seen as deserving allies as well right um, and they looked very favor favorably upon them um, at that time when Elphinstone was in was um, um, in Afghanistan. But when it came to a Russian threat, um, uske saath, uh, British ki obviously policies were changing and, and for the region, right? And how they wanted the region for themselves. Um, and strategically, uh, wo jo ek borderland region tha, uski kya significance thi for, 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 for British officials, um, that basically also had an impact on the relations of these, um, on the relations between the British and Afghanistan and the Pashtuns. Um, and also at the same time, it had an impact on knowledge production. So then they sent Alexander Burns, who was the main basically, um, yahi, um, uh, perception oh. that they're, uh, they're people who are resisting control. And because they were positionality, se dekh rahe the, wo us position, pe khade ho ke dekh rahe the, and these were essentially military officials. Those positions were being watched. 
उनकी परसेप्शन भी उसी से इम्पैक्ट हो रही थी सो बिकॉज द पर्सन वर रेजिस्टिंग कंट्रोल एंड दे वर रेजिस्टिंग ब्रिटिश एक्सपेंशन इज पॉलिसीज द ब्रिटिश स्टार्टेड राइटिंग डाउन Pashtuns as a race with martial attributes, and this is something that a lot of Pashtuns have internalized as well. That oh, we're a martial race, you know. We, um, hum, hume bandhu ke bahut achhi chalani aati hain, hume bahut shock hai in cheezon ka. Lekin ye cheeze aista aista internalized bhi ho gayi thi. Or um, and because these, like I said previously as well, because all they were interested in was essentially that um, you know. in terms of alliances yeah in terms of british control or expansion in logo ki kis in logo ka kis tarah ka response hai that's the only aspect of pashtun identity that they were interested in now the problem with that was ki that was noted down in narratives and discourse on pashtun pashtuns as if that's the only thing that the pashtuns can do and that's the only thing that the pashtuns can be so we never really truly saw um the other aspects of pashtun identity right um jisme private sphere mein unki bahut cheeze thi unke culture mein aur bahut cheeze thi jo ke in in official texts mein kabhi aayi nahi um ye pehli baat aista aista over time jab ye resistance hone lag gayi british expansionist policies ki taraf to pashtuns ki jis tarah um ek discourse ban gaya tha wo essentially ek colonial vulnerability se nikal raha tha so they were written off as barbarians like i said and because they were written off as barbarians and because itni ek um a colonial vulnerability thi that led to the justification of unleashing a regime of terror on these people right um so colonial vulnerability that fictionalized the barbarity of the pashtuns um jo ke वो लोग अपनी तरफ से एक कंट्रोल को रिजिस्ट कर रहे थे एंड वॉज अ पोलिटिकल एक्ट राइट इट वॉज एन एन एक्ट दैट वॉज कम्प्लीटली डिवॉइड ऑफ एनी पोलिटिकल थॉट ब्रिटिश ऑफिसर्स एंड मिलिट्री ऑफिसर्स बिकॉज मिलिट्री ऑफिसर्स वर द वंस टेकिंग केयर ऑफ द फ्रंटियर रीजन राइट दे स्टार्टेड यू नो रिकॉर्डिंग दीज इवेंट्स एंड दे स्टार्टेड राइटिंग एज वेल एंड कॉन्क्वेस्ट ऑफ द पेन वॉज अ वेरी बिग थिंग बैक इन द टाइम एंड स्टिल स्टिल इज एंड दिस इज समथिंग आई टॉक अबाउट बट इन्होंने एक तो लोकल न्यूज़ पेपर्स में और जो ब्रिटिश न्यूज़ पेपर्स भी थे सो बेसिकली न्यूज़ पेपर्स बैक होम दे स्टार्टेड दे स्टार्टेड जस्टिफाइंग यू नो व्हाई दे हैड टू हैव द काइंड ऑफ फोर्स दैट दे वर एम्प्लॉइंग इन दैट रीजन एंड द काइंड ऑफ टॉर्चर दे वर unleashing on these people because ye log the uncivilized and that's the only thing that they deserve and that's also the only thing that would control them and their barbaric essential nature so by essential nature i mean something that they're born with something that's so ingrained in their identity ke um uske sath deal karne ka aur koi tarika nahi hai um and that is what british discourse ya yeah, british jo narratives the kitabon ke andar that's what they did they basically uh, justified why violence was the only kind of response that um aap pashtuns ko basically de sakte the उसके साथ साथ क्या हुआ कि um, जब इन्होंने इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज कर ली ये चीज़ें तो um, अच्छा एक और बात इससे ये भी होना शुरू हो गया कि बिकॉज ये मिलिट्री ऑफिसर्स जो थे दे दे वर बेसिकली um seen as situated in the harsh frontier right they they weren't like others jo ke calcutta type uh, jagah mein reh rahe the so other imperial power centers wo log wahan pe nahi the wo log ek aise harsh frontier mein the jiske liye unhe resources bhi zyada chahiye the right aur unko power bhi zyada chahiye thi aur unhe autonomy bhi zyada chahiye thi the autonomy and the power to be able to do whatever they wanted to do from in the frontier region and also be given more resources so um there is also this analysis ke there is a possibility that they um ke inhone kuch zyada hi inflate kar diya tha this idea of um how barbaric the pashtun could be taki unko resources zyada mil sake um because inhone ye cheeze pashtun culture ki pashtun wali ki institutionalize kar di thi what that meant was ke it was fixed in time and this is something i talked about right ke pashtun culture ko unhone static kar diya tha pashtun culture was no longer something that could be locally negotiated um between the people right that it, wa- it wasn't something that could 
respond to changes um, in time because culture is something that evolves with time, right? Um, lekin because it was codified, it was institutionalized, and it was compartmentalized. Tha. Pashtuns, which were very dynamic, the, and they still are very dynamic. There isn't one Pashtun body. There are several tribes, there are several sub-tribes, there are several subcultures as well, um, and several religious identities as well, right? Um, uh, and across the world as well. Um, but because they they codified it, that basically meant it was static ho gaya and it couldn't move, it couldn't respond to time, it was stuck. Pashtun identity was then stuck in a zone zone of timelessness. And I saw the news of colonial news of that time, and if I share it with you, I can share it with you. Yes, just a sec. So, it will be interesting to see what the news was done in the news of the news of at the time or what the kind of depiction of the logo was. So, okay. So, this is one. Um, and This basically, I don't know if you guys are looking at the top of the depiction of the depiction that the you know, bandhu is not hai and, and this really matters because of how uh, we, the way we visually imagine the Pashtun today is not very different from uh, what we're being shown here. And um, apart from this, there is also another very interesting uh, picture. Let's share the screen again. Uh, there you go. No. Is there um, a depiction? Bandhu ke uh, mu covered hai. Or um, you know, prone to violence, prone to um, wars, prone to resistance, and you know, ye, among the world's most skillful warriors. मतलब ये ये आखिर कहाँ से ये statistics इन लोगों ने निकाली थी कि इस तरह की एक सोच बन गई थी कि you know there there is nothing else that these people could possibly uh, were they uh, were they anything other than just being skillful warriors? Oh. Wow, that that really that's horrible that you guys can't see it. Uh, chalo, I think technologically, like in terms of technology, I really failed badly. I thought it would be something super cool, but anyway, मतलब मैंने ये अखबार थे पुराने 1937 के थे उससे कुछ पहले भी थे जिसमें ये दिखाया जा रहा था कि पगड़ियाँ पहनी हुई हैं और AK-47 पकड़े हुए हैं और मुंह छुपाए हुए हैं or um, you know उसके ऊपर title है most skillful warriors or oh you know they're um, uh, involved in feuds and they're involved in battle and it was a private battle and British वहाँ पे आके उनको civilize कर रहे हैं तो इस तरह की images हम अभी तक देखते हैं कि पश्तून्स के साथ काफी associate की जाती हैं which is um, very obviously problematic um, anyway uh, moving on I mean there were the, the kinds of things that were being said about Pashtuns were also um, um, you know they, they, there were a lot of animal metaphors that were used to describe the Pashtuns I'll, I'll quickly like round up this this part but it's actually one of the most interesting things that I came about I I went through a newspapers um, which was 1819 to 1948 to 1950. And the local colonial India newspapers and British newspapers. So I went through them, um, archives, and there was a lot of interesting things. There were animal metaphors used with Pashtuns. So for example, Jo ek uh, major general sahab the hamare Herbert Benjamin unhone likha tha ki you know the problem with this garden of eden was that the serpent had entered it in the form of its inhabitants nature has so smiled on bannu <laughs> that the stranger thinks it is a paradise and when he turns to the people wonders how much spirits of evil ever found um, admittance now this is 
this is amazing because it i mean first of all um banu ko matlab yahan pe garden of eden kaha ja raha hai um ye to kafi amazing baat hai pata nahi um <laughs> anyway yeah banu is banu is pretty nice um i think it's culturally very rich uh lekin ye kehna ki you know banu as a geographic space achhi hai lekin uh, ye jo serpents ne enter kar diya hai na is garden of eden ko they have somehow made it hell and somehow pashtun presence uh, in 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 a certain area somehow taints that land and opens that land to um violence and um, and a policy that's extremely harsh right and this is something that we see in narratives today as well ke pashtun identity and the pashtun self is tied to geography it's tied to the landscape of the area pashtun volatility and pashtun propensity towards violence ya unke jo martial attributes hain aur militancy hai somehow that reflects in um their landscape as well right and this is the kind of narrative that we see today as well uh, churchill sahab jo the unhone to seedha seedha kaha ke they're wild beasts you know um they're vermin they've infested areas um uh video is stuck chale as long as you guys can hear me my face is not that great anyway uh so is tarah ki baatein ki ja rahi thi you know um then came the khudai khidmatkar movement um and 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 and, and and this is very interesting ke even towards uh, the khudai khidmatkar movement although they challenged this idea of um what the pashtun could be right they it was a non violent movement um it was very organized it was very politically uh, charged um and very politically sophisticated as well they st- they tried to and they did um wonderfully try to redefine what the pashtun could be that a pashtun could be a sophisticated political actor that indigenous people could come out and um the beast of i mean i hate to use the word sophisticated but they could be more than just these barbarians that these officials were talking about right um lekin unki taraf bhi jo response british ka aaya tha it was there was a lot of propaganda ke nahi ye to um uh, jo um, pashtun jo non violence hai there there is no bigger lie than that right um and ye jhoot hai even even uske baad bhi uh, jo documents aaye the um uh, 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 ब्रिटिश ऑफिशल्स के बीच में जो शेयर हुए थे या जो न्यूज़पेपर्स में इनके बारे में रिपोर्ट्स आई थी दे वर स्टिल समहाउ सेइंग के नो दीज पीपल आर वायलेंट दे आर स्टिल क्रिमिनल एंड दे समहाउ स्टिल इमेजिन देम थ्रू दिस नैरो टनल of um you know volatility and although they they were completely non violent but because itna cement ho gaya tha idea of pashtun being nothing else than a militant nothing else than being violent right um ke their existence it was just there to uh, perform this these acts of violence that they could be they couldn't be anything else um at that time um there was because there was a lot of emphasis on difference uh, i have two sets of notes there was a lot of emphasis on difference right um and jo bhi um idea tha british ka of of the word tribe because the word tribe uh, the colonial understanding of the word tribe boiled down to primitivity to it boiled down to criminality right and this isn't just um, in terms of uh, this isn't just towards the pashtun wasn't just because uh, towards the pashtuns but ye aur bhi jo tribes the unki taraf bhi tha jin jin tribes ko jin groups ko inhone phir crimin, uh, criminalize criminalize bhi kar diya tha inhone aise laws pass kar diye the aisi policies pass kar di thi um jiske andar um इन्होंने कहा था कि यू नो ये जो कुछ ट्राइब्स हैं ये जो कुछ लोग हैं ये आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द क्रिमिनल ट्राइब्स एक्ट ये जो कुछ लोग हैं ये ना है ही इनहेरेंटली ट्राइबल एंड ये सॉरी क्रिमिनल राइट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट सो यू नो दिस आइडिया दिस एम्फिसिस ऑन डिफरेंस then justified the fcr so the frontier crimes reg- regulation now the the point of the fcr and uh, fcr was to rule these people indirectly right um and ruling them indirectly uh, as it's been sold to us by the state of pakistan uh, and also by was sold to us by british official officials was ki you know because they're so different you know they deserve respect aur ye log apne systems chalaye but ruling indirectly was basically um uh, another term for ruling on the cheap right it was very cheap 
to rule these people indirectly to have these laws in place for them jo ke you know uh, collectivize karte the logo ko to fcr basically was an alternative model of sovereignty it was an alternative model of subjecthood and of citizenship so these people were very much different were treated very much different from other people in the subcontinent right and ye jo fcr tha isne mark kiya tha relationship jo ke ab pashtuns ki hogi with the state and it also allowed the state to exploit this the legality of this relationship jab inhone ye kaha ki you know collective responsibility ek tribe ki aa gayi hai ki agar ek bande ek, ek tribe mein ek bande ne koi um, uh, crime commit kiya hai to collectively aap ek tribe ko punish kar sakte ho this feeds into the idea that pashtuns weren't seen as a dynamic group making dynamic decisions or having dynamic personalities it was basically the product of saying all pashtuns are the same all pashtuns are prone to criminal behavior to militancy and violence so if one does something you can punish all of them right it's kosher it's fine it's no big deal cuz chale wo aaj usne aaj inhone nahi kiya is kabile ne to ye shayad kal ko kar de because they're just essentially criminals that's the kind of narrative that that, that was being built upon right um so apart from that us time mein policy of access aa gayi thi you know there was a policy of deliberate political and de- developmental regression um although uh, issue civility ka tha pashtuns ka lekin it's amazing how nothing was done for education nothing was done for health nothing was done for you know um, um otherwise developing the area the only kind of development that took place was in terms of roads forts railways that were basically built to expand military control right to make these areas accessible for military deployment बिकॉज वो उस एरिया का जो स्ट्रेटिजिक जो उसकी स्ट्रेटिजिक इंपॉर्टेंस थी राइट इन इन द ग्रेट गेम रशिया के उसकी वजह से and it basically formalized fcr formalized the different nature of the region right um it legalized the feeling of apart apartness of these people ki ye different hai um and it also then formalized um the existence of this region as um a marshland right ki yahan pe sirf jange honge yahan pe sirf troop deployment hogi and we still see that um happening um so moving on um pashtuns were seen as suspect bodies right they were seen as criminals and this is something i've touched on uh khudai khidmatkar movement while challenged that um there was um a lot of police there was a lot of censorship and propaganda about them uh, around them unka jo journal tha pakhtun usko ban kar diya gaya tha authorities jo thi wo intercept karti thi unki information sheets aur bulletins um aur jab um, press act ka ordinance pass hua tha to उसमें ये लिखा लिखा था कि यू नो जो सोबर और स्टेबल एलिमेंट्स हैं इंडिया में वो क्रिटिसाइज कर लें तो सही है लेकिन जो लॉलेस मूवमेंट्स हैं ना वो नहीं कर सकती तो जो लीगैलिटी या वो जो लेजिटिमेसी मुस्लिम लीग की सियासत को दी गई थी वो खुदाई खिदमत गार मूवमेंट की जो ग्रास रूट्स पॉलिटिक्स थी वॉज एन ये एलिटिस पॉलिटिक्स नहीं थी वो लेजिटिमेसी उनको नहीं दी दी गई थी तो जो ट्रोप्स थे फनाटिसिज्म के या मैडनेस के वो एसोसिएट किए जा रहे थे एट द सेम टाइम ये भी प्रोपोगेंडा था कि जी ये तो मॉस्को लीनिंग मूवमेंट है ये तो रेड शर्ट मूवमेंट एंड दे वर एसोसिएटेड विद रशिया एंड दैट वॉज ऑल्सो प्रोपोगेंडा राइट तो जब मुसलमानों के सामने प्रोपोगेंडा खड़ा करते थे तो कहते थे कि जी ये गांधी के साथ अलायंस कर रहे हैं तो ये तो हिंदू हैं सो दैट्स हाउ दे वुड यू नो एंगर द मुस्लिम्स एंड टर्न देम अगेंस्ट खुदाई खिदमत गार ऑन द अदर हैंड व्हेन दे ट्राई टू टर्न यू नो जनरली एवरी अगेंस्ट दैम देट से कि ये तो जी रशिया रशिया की तरफ से ये मूवमेंट आई है और जब जब जो हिंदू हिंदू के सामने प्रोपोगेंडा ये लोग रखते थे अगेंस्ट खुदाई खिदमत गार्डेट से के ओ यू नो देर लाइंग अबाउट बीइंग नॉन वायलेंट बिकॉज गांधी की जो नॉन वायलेंट मूवमेंट थी वो भी साइमल्टेनियसली चल रही थी um, तो उनको ये प्रोपोगेंडा वो किया जा रहा था कि ये झूठ है ये असल में नॉन वायलेंट नहीं है um, now moving on to the pakistan state right um and i want to quickly round this up taki hum sawal pe zyada jaye and this is more interactive than um it is right now um but पाकिस्तान स्टेट में ये हुआ कि यही जो कलोनियल वॉनरेबिलिटी उस टाइम में देखी जा रही थी वो पाकिस्तान स्टेट में भी आ गई राइट जो हमारे नेशनल बुर्जवाजी थे जो हमारे उर्दू स्पीकिंग एलीट थी इन्होंने स्टेट तो सेपरेट बना दिया एक इस्लाम के उस पर लेकिन बाद में उनसे मैनेज नहीं हो पाया राइट देर सो मैनी डिफरेंट आइडेंटिटीज दैट नाउ 
after you know making um after un unifying whether or not they were unified in creating pakistan as a separate debate altogether like in pakistan chale jab ban gaya uske baad unhone kaha ki acha ab hamara kya um this or to speak in this national bourgeoisie right these elites said ke nahi nahi ji hum sab ek hain aap log apni identity bhool jaye and uh, you know homogenize we're all the same and this is something that wasn't acceptable to these people for many reasons and this is something that i'll conclude on right bacha khan ki jo siyasat thi wo tab bhi um uh um uh, although he swore allegiance to the state of pakistan he said ke pashtunistan what pashtunistan pashtunistan meant to him now was that you know and ye um uh, jo nwfp naam tha jo ke abhi thodi der pehle tak bhi uh, pakistan state was also resisting changing the name right um nwfp northwest frontier province whatever it is i mean i uh, that doesn't even mean anything right <laughs> but um ke ye jo naam hai hame bhi wahi naam de jis tarah balochistan hai ya sindh hai ya punjab hai um and they while this were legions but they were still viewed with a lot of uh, suspicion right kayum khan jo chief minister the tab nwfp ke unhone kaha ki you know give up politics on party lines for ne- for 5 years ya phir muslim league ko join kar lo they obviously resisted that um there was a lot of back and forth but i mean what happened then was the babra massacre and the babra massacre was when um they basically uh, point blank shot um um these protesters who were completely non violent and uh, massacred a lot of people um what kayum khan had to say in response to that was ke they were lucky that the police's ammunition ran out otherwise not a single soul would have survived so this just goes to show how uh, the pashtun body um uske upar sirf violence sirf physical nahi um uh, uh, wo ki gayi thi lekin at the same time ek knowledge production ki bhi jo violence thi jo ki us knowledge production ki wajah se nikalti thi ek uh, pashtun body ki jo worth thi in the state right wo us knowledge ki bhi jo violence thi wo bhi pashtun body ke upar nik- nikli jati thi uh, administrative continuity bhi humne dekhi pakistan mein fcr अभी तक um, लगा हुआ था अभी भी um, फाटा का के मर्जर के बाद भी uh, कितना फाटा मर्ज हो चुका है um, that's still um, a question right now. फाटा does not, I mean um, X फाटा uh, X फाटा does not have internet. Um, जहाँ पे digital learning digital learning की बात की जा रही है university students के लिए um, uh, students in फाटा are completely deprived of those educational opportunities. Homes are still being raided. Um, movement is still very much restricted right or check post to wahan pe hain um so but because military presence itni reh chuki thi in this area and wo jo legacy thi of uh, 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 the frontier region um, being a marshland aur wo uske baad bhi uh, jo uski existence thi as a marshland wo continued rahi state mein that's why um the military continued to hold a lot of importance in that region right not just in terms of um how they reported back whether or not they reported but how they reported back on the region but also the kind of policies that were that were that continued to be continued to exist in the region had a lot to do with how this um had a lot to do with this colonial uh, legacy right um the covert and implicit labeling of pashtun identity and geography as a security issue um uh, has has led to um coercive policies right in the region and legitimize ye ki jati hain through narratives narratives of the volatility of pashtuns and their land uh, aur jahan pe ek counter narrative ka absence hai aur jahan pe communication ka absence hai right there is no communication coming from the other side ke you know wahan pe kya kiya ja raha hai aur jab communication hoti bhi hai indigenous uh, movements ke through uh, usko completely um, wo kiya rad kar diya jata hai ki nahi ye to ji propaganda hai ye to foreign funded hai um to because there is no counter narrative um is um is uh, idea ye jo idea hai is area ki volatility ka uh, ya legitimacy ka in policies ka is region mein uh, uski taraf koi resistance um uski taraf koi counter narrative basically nahi communicate kiya ja raha because there is no way to communicate um 
However, that has changed, right? Uh, that has changed quite a lot with um, uh, with netizens, right? Your digital agency, Twitter or social media, pe, um, aa rahi hai. Uski wajah se ye kafi badal chuka hai. But I think at the same time, we need to realize that not a lot of people have access to uh, these mediums, and there's a lot of censorship around that as well, right? Um, that we've seen. Um, lekin ye jo ye jo baat hai ke um, a frontier as a site of anxiety um, allows ke you know. moral indifference thoda sa aa jaye ke khair hai you know violence thoda bahut ban jata hai and this is very interesting and this is something like uh, from a personal point of view it's amazing how living in punjab we used to um my sister and i were discussing this ke we use whenever someone would ask us ke aap kahan se hain hum kehte the ke ji hum ilaka e ghair se hain theek hai and and this is so interesting ke as pashtuns ourselves we hum hame nahi tha pata ke we we would just say ilaka e ghair and we never really broke down the word to see ke oh my god what 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 are we saying what what are we um what are we saying right ke hum ek ghair ilake se hain we're from the land of the other um but because um this feeling of the other was so ingrained in us and we also saw it on on and we obviously picked up this word from newspapers and uh, news channels as well where this area was being described as the land of the other you know um and then that that we that we also started describing ourselves that way and we internalized it a lot that way um so this then led to i mean my whole thesis was that because because of this continuity ke martial race theory ho gayi aage ja ke continue kar diya gaya is baat ko ke now it ties in with this whole idea of pashtun identity being equal to taliban identity talibanization being equal to pashtun nationalism right that it somehow represents um pashtuns and this is something that um that is also uh, very prevalent this this uh, this narrative and that's that's because of the legacy jo ke continue ki gayi hai abhi tak and jis tarah cement kar diya hai is martial race theory ko ke pashtuns to aur kuch ho hi nahi sakte um ya kisi aur tarike se exist hi nahi kar sakte but i think um ptm is a corrective to that discourse um what they've um uh, achieved is ke because it's a grassroots movement and, and it's completely non violent uh they've redefined what pashtun nationalism truly is right they've they've um also owned um and taken back uh pashtun nationalism uh for themselves as 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 being something other than talibanization right a communication ka function to unhone kiya kiya jisme they started communicating ke wahan pe ho kya raha hai lekin redefine redef, redefine karne ka function bhi kiya and at the same time they also added to the discourse right while the state's reply is the same as it, as it would be to um um you know state ka reply wahi hai jo colonial officials ka tha jahan pe wahan um uh, kissa khwani bazar massacre hua tha ya baad mein pakistan mein babra massacre hua tha abhi hamara um, khadkamar massacre hua tha jisme non violent ek uh, gathering thi usi tarah usko uh, violence ke sath uh, respond kiya gaya and generally be uh, it's being labeled as you know um, an engineered movement protests unke engineered hain there's a lot of censorship around it a lot of propaganda around it and the way that the state is dealing with it is in line with the kind of knowledge that was produced right yeah uh, and they're also somehow trying to continue with the policies that the british had or uh, or uh, post colonial jo initial jo pakistan ke stage the usme jo policies thi but because times are very different um the same policies can't be um implemented in the region and i think the biggest problem with this is ke uh, the state's requirement of pakistani identity being homogenous right um whereas um, uh, um ye jo ek uh, social rela- ye jo ek relationship hai um um state ka logo ke sath it, it shouldn't be based on homogen homogeneity right um uh, social contract ke andar aap various groups ke sath bhi wo contract kar sakte ho without asking them to forego their identity and also an identity that's rooted in history and that predates the creation of the country right and has its own heroes own poets own victories um whereas the way that the state has responded to this is ke and the colonial and post colonial both uh, that they've completely delegitimized the heroes of pashtuns as traitors uh, there has been an imposition of criminal and militant um um you know uh, cr- criminal or militant elements jo hain wo unke sath associate kiye jate hain as um, symbolic of pashtun cultural uh, heroes um which 
there's a deficiency of uh, referring to indigenous Pashtun history in textbooks or in terms of, you know, um, there are no honorary statues, public holidays, or even a mere mention on television of these heroes or, you know, about just the Bacha Khan or the Bohad as the heroes. The elite history, the elite's ki history, the Urdu uh, elite's ki history, or national bourgeoisie's ki history, is imposed on people. And obviously, there's going to be a lot of retaliation to this. Um, the lack of interest of the state to truly alter the lack of civility which is associated with the people of the frontier is evident through the absence of judicial and legislative structures, right? Um, as well as the absence of schools, of colleges, of hospitals, and other basic structures existing in the rest of the country. So if civility is such a big problem, uh, why is there an the, the state is not really doing anything to bring um, light and stability um, to this region, right? Um, so um, while post-colonial state and the colonial state both justify, um, uh, justified this, you know, through um, a policy of non-interference in light of Pashtun resistance to control, um, they've at the, they've what they've actually done is they've kept them away from a universally recognized judicial system. Um, and in the absence of Pashtun indigenous voices, uh, state ka narrative is very difficult for people, it is very difficult to challenge karne ke liye. However, like I said, the, the, the PTM has definitely um, changed this uh, and also changed the idea of, uh, redefined the idea of Pashtuns being unresponsive to changes around them with a thirst for violence, right? Um, and so the remaking of the Pashtun self through the narrative of the subaltern, of, you know, from, from the grassroots becomes worrying for a state that has used Pashtun identity, weaponized it, and marketed it as a reason why the security state must continue to exist, um, drawing in money from outside and obviously leeching on uh, money uh, from within. Um, I think that I'll, I'll just end that here and baki phir jab main sawal ke jawab dungi, uh, main uh, uske andar aur bhi agar kuch points art karne ho, to main kar lungi. Sorry if I rambled on for too long. Um, okay, there are questions. Uh, sorry, let me just um, do not mind. I'm going to take a shot of uh, cup syrup, but I don't have corona. Sorry, just a croaky throat. Um, चलें कुछ ऐसे कमेंट्स हैं जिन्होंने कसम खा ली है कि इतना सब सुनने के बाद भी वो नहीं मानेंगे कि पश्तून्स लूटर्स और वाइल्ड पीपल के अलावा कुछ नहीं हो सकते तो लेट्स मूव ऑन फ्रॉम दैट so yeah, Hassan Ali says, for one time, if we ignore the past newspaper, what is the present situation and point of view of the people about पश्तून्स? You mean Pash Pashtun is not just for battles? Yeah, of course, of course, Pashtuns are not just for battles. And this is something that I think researchers now um, uh, uh, need to look at, right? The uh, 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 elitist history that is written or the narratives that are written, I think that those need to be challenged. And the local production of history, which I said in the piece that I have written in the piece, is very important, hai, not just for agency, but it's very important that you have colonial knowledge or post-colonial knowledge ko accountable karo ke, you know, ya aap kya kar rahe ho. Um, there is more to Pashtun identity than just that. Um, and because there's a res absence of response from the other, and this is something that James Caron talks about, it is very difficult to this narrative. Ko, uh, challenge karna. So yeah, definitely, Pashtuns aren't just for battles. They were never just for battles. There was a lot um, attached to Pashtun identity, but because uh, military officials and military commanders, um, British to Pakistan, ta, Pakistani, officials tak, ye sare mili military ne control kiya wa tha us region ko naturally then wo ek military tunnel vision, ek military led tunnel vision to support military policy, right? Um, Pashtuns ko usi vision se dekha gaya and phir policies bhi uh, usi tarah phir lagu ki gai. Um, Fahad Khan, I hope I hope she covers how certain negative traits of our Pashtun culture on their own made an impact, how in some parts of the region. Yeah, 
yes of course i mean they 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 i'm not saying uh, this this isn't a skewed uh, this isn't a biased um analysis i know it may it might uh, sound like one uh, there are many things internal to pashtun culture like all cultures that need to be um, that need to evolve and that need to change with time but that's what i'm trying to say because unko itna codify kar diya gaya aur itna uh, cement kar diya gaya ki unka badalna bahut mushkil ho gaya tha and isme um, I'm not taking away agency from Pashtuns and saying कि नहीं नहीं जी वो कुछ कर नहीं सकते थे नहीं वो बिल्कुल कर सकते थे लेकिन बिकॉज उन जगहों में और कोई डिवेलपमेंट आई नहीं दे ऑल्सो कुरेंट सी दे वर ऑल्सो स्टाक इन अ जोन ऑफ टाइमलेसनेस राइट वो भी एक जोन में फंसे हुए थे जहाँ पर ना पढ़ाई थी ना हस्पताल थे ना कोई लीगल स्ट्रक्चर्स थे नेचुरली वो जो कल्चरल एबनॉर्मेलिटीज थी उनका बदलना वो जो बदलते भी हैं वो कांटेक्ट के साथ बदलते हैं वो एजुकेशन के साथ चाहे कांटेक्ट हो आउटसाइड वर्ल्ड के साथ कांटेक्ट हो बट बिकॉज दीज रीजन वर कम्प्लीटली कट ऑफ फ्रॉम अदर रीजन इन इन द वर्ल्ड एंड ऑल्सो विद इन विद इन द सब कॉन्टिनेंट राइट इट ऑब्वियसली बिकेम वेरी डिफरेंट डिफिकल्ट फॉर दीज कल्चर्स टू इवॉल्व एंड still is very difficult to evolve so yeah i completely agree as far as khan titles are concerned and this is something i missed on ke khan khani jo elite thi wo banai british mein thi british ne thi jo um uh, uh पश्तून जो इंटरनल स्ट्रक्चर था वो बहुत इगेलिटेरियन था बट बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट बिकॉज ब्रिटिश ऑफिशल्स लाइक आई सेड वॉन्टेड टू रूल ऑन द चीप एंड रूल इन डायरेक्टली उन्होंने उन ये जो जिरगा सिस्टम को एक तो बहुत वो कर दिया ख़राब कर दिया उसके अंदर इन लोगों ने क्लास स्ट्रक्चर ये लोग ले आए बाई ब्रिंगिंग इन लैंड लॉर्ड्स एंड अ लैंडेड इलीट ऑफ पीपल राइट एंड दैट ऑब्वियसली ब्रॉट इन अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम एंड आई एंड अभी तक ये प्रॉब्लम एग्जिस्ट करती हैं हसन अली वाई ब्रिटिश हेट पश्तून यू टेल मी आफ्टर ऑल ऑफ दिस जी आसिफ वो वही लॉ की मैंने बात की थी क्रिमिनल ट्राइब्स एक्ट वो था और भी ऐसे बहुत एक्ट्स थे जो कि इम्पोज किए गए थे मतलब एफ भी उसी की एक उसी की एक वो थी क्या कहते हैं मैनिफेस्टेशन मैंने लिखा हुआ भी था यहाँ पे एक्चुअली माय एक वो भी था मर्डरस आउटरेज आउट एक्ट दैट्स आल्सो वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज उसके अंदर भी जो एक लैंग्वेज थी अराउंड यू नो मुस्लिम फनाटिसम एंड यू नो दीज पीपल जो कि ऊपर से आके नीचे आते हैं अर्बन मॉडर्न सेंटर्स में सिविलाइज सेंटर्स में उसके अराउंड भी जो लैंग्वेज थी इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इट्स समथिंग दैट Uh, you guys should uh, look at uh, murderous outrages act acha olivia what was the feeling amongst pashtuns during the nationalist movement movement especially the pakistan movement how much or how little did the pashtuns identify with the urdu speaking elite who were the main proponents of the idea of pakistan um <clears throat> um i think the the i think pashtuns uh, as far as uh, my understanding of it is um I don't think they identify with uh, the Urdu speaking elite. I think the majority of this country does not identify with 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 the national project that the Urdu elite is trying to push still after uh, uh, I mean so many decades of Pakistan's existence, right? Um jo nationalist movement tab thi khudai khidmatkar obviously wo time bahut fark tha uh kyunki us time pe um बहुत डिफरेंट डिफरेंट किस्म की मूवमेंट्स थी एंड तब भी दे वर दे वर्न इन फेवर ऑफ पाकिस्तान सेपरेटिंग बिकॉज दे फेल दैट यू नो बिकॉज आई मीन एंड एंड दिस इज वेल नोन टू अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल एंड आई थिंक दिस इज इफ इफ इट्स नॉट आई थिंक वी शुड डू अ लॉट ऑफ रिसर्च ऑन दैट वी शुड लुक दिस अप कि पाकिस्तान जो क्रिएट किया गया था वो हालांकि शुरू तो इस पॉइंट से हुआ था कि माइनॉरिटीज के लिए बन रहा है लेकिन um, आखिर में जो रीजन्स पाकिस्तान के अंदर आए थे वो वो रीजन्स थे जो कि मेजोरिटी रीजन्स थे रीजन्स दैट दैट वर्नट रियली एक्सपीरियंसिंग एनी काइंड ऑफ यू नो लार्ज स्केल communal violence they were complete they were fine they were doing well they were also collaborating i mean for example punjab ke andar um i think it was the unionist party if i'm not wrong just ke andar sikh muslims and hindus um um it was a multi religious party right and they were um working together there was no problem at all um to pakistan bana to uh, 
مائنورٹی کی مائنورٹی کے جو ایشوز تھے ان بیسس پہ لیکن اینڈ میں وہ مائنورٹیز بیچاری ابھی تک بیٹھی ہوئی ہیں انڈیا میں اور وہ میجورٹیز جن کو پارٹیشن کی اتنی ضرورت نہیں تھی اینڈ دے ور آلسو ریزسٹنگ پارٹیشن بائی دا وے وہ ریجنس آ گئے ان کے اندر سو آبیسلی دے دے ورنٹ اوکے ود دس پروجیکٹ آف دا اردو الیڈ بیک دین وین پاکستان واز ان کریٹ اینڈ دس از آئی ایم ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا خدا خدمت گار موومنٹ دے ڈینٹ وانٹ پاکستان ٹو بی اے سیپریٹ اسٹیٹ ایز فار ایز دا نیشنلس موومنٹ رائٹ ناؤ دے دے وانٹ ٹو ورک آئی مین واٹ دے آسکنگ فار وہ کانسٹیٹیوشنل رائٹس ہیں کانسٹیٹیوشن پاکستان کے کانسٹیٹیوشن کے اندر ہی وہ کام کرنا چاہتے ہیں کہ جو اس کے اندر رائٹس ہیں جو کہ دیے گئے ہیں ہمیں ایز سٹیزنس وہ ان کے اوپر بھی لاگو کیے جائیں اس کے علاوہ جو اسٹرکچرز باقی پاکستان میں ایگزٹ کرتے ہیں جس طرح کی سو کالڈ سولٹی ایگزٹ کرتی ہے دیٹس آلسو ڈیبیٹیبل بٹ اس طرح کے اسٹرکچرز اس طرح کی اس طرح کا فوکس اس طرح کی کائنڈنیس ان کی طرف بھی ایکسٹینڈ کی جائے اینڈ آبویسلی آل دس وائل دے آر ناٹ آس ٹو گیو اپ دیر آئیڈینٹی رائٹ بیکاز دیر آئیڈینٹی از روٹیڈ ان ہسٹری دیٹ پری ڈیٹس دا کریشن آف پاکستان فرحتاج کین دس ڈسکورس بی لیفٹ آن چیلنجڈ So I'm thinking of holistic understanding of Pashtun problems and also of intellectual, of intellectual honest, frankly. Um, I, think, I think they can be challenged. I think, I think there needs to be, uh, from, from my understanding of it, what I've seen now is that there is a lot of thanks and new work is coming. not much not as much as uh, there should be and i think that has a lot to do with the accessibility of the region not just the accessibility of the region but obviously private sphere may jo log uh, private sphere ko bhi um uh, infiltrate karna uh, ya uske andar bhi aana is very difficult um Uh, research ke liye and language ki bhi accessibility ka bahut masla hai to researchers ke liye bahut mushkil hai obviously pashtuns ke upar likhna um, from a very um, in, in a very honest way in a very factual and accurate way right but i feel like because and this is the problem because from within the community right pashtuns ke andar ya itna education ka masla hai ki wo and that does not however mean that there isn't research being done there is a lot of be- research being done that i I've come to know of Peshawar mein bahut ho rahi hai Pashtuns ke upar jo ke ho rahi hai lekin masla ye hai ki because there's such a lack of um, resources and education and um, generally access to other access to you know uh, priv- centers jo ke privileged log access kar sakte hain right um, ke wo narratives ya wo discourse jo پبلشڈ بکس کی فارم میں آتا ہے یا آرٹیکلس کی فارم میں آتا ہے وہ بہت مشکل ہے لیکن لیکن یہ چیزیں آہستہ آہستہ بدل رہی ہیں یہ یہ جو چیزیں ہیں یہ چیلنج کی جا رہی ہیں کہ یہ جو کنسیپشن ہے پشتونس کے بارے میں یہ کہاں سے اوریجنیٹ کرتا ہے یہ ابھی تک کس طرح کنٹینیو کیا گیا ہے بینجامن ہاپکنس کا کام ہے اس کے اوپر منان کا کام ہے اس کے اوپر الزبتھ لیگ کا کام ہے اس کے اوپر کافی زیادہ تو اینڈ آئی تھنک دیٹس ویری انٹرسٹنگ انٹرسٹنگ ٹو لک ایٹ جیمس کیرن از مائی فیوریٹ بیکاز ہی لکس دیٹ ہاؤ جو بارڈر لینڈ ریجن ہے اس کی طرف سے اس کے اندر سے یو نو نیرٹوز نکلنے چاہیے ریسپانسز نکلنے چاہیے اور ہسٹری رائٹنگ ہونی چاہیے فرام ود ان دا فرام ود ان دا کمیونٹی رائٹ بیکاز ناٹ اونلی از دیٹ اے فارم آف ایجنسی بٹ اٹس آلسو فارم آف چیلنجنگ کلونیل Um, writings. Um, Asif, ہم اپنے ریسورسز اپنے آپ کو ڈیولپ کرنے کے لیے اس لیے نہیں یوز کر سکتے بیکاز ہمارے ریسورسز ہمارے ہاتھ میں نہیں ہیں ایون جو نیچرل ریسورسز پروڈیوس کیے جاتے ہیں کے پی کے میں وہ ڈائیورٹ کر دیے جاتے ہیں دوسرے صوبوں کی طرف اینڈ آبویسلی ایز وی آل نو دا بجٹ اینڈ دا ریسورسز آر ناٹ ان دا ہینڈز ان 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 آر ہینڈز اینڈ دے آلسو ناٹ ان دا ہینڈز آف آئی ووڈ سی ناٹ ایون ان دا ہینڈز آف دا گورمنٹ اینڈ بیکاز دا کائنڈ آف پالیسی اور میں یہی تب سے کہہ رہی ہوں کہ بیکاز جس طرح اس ریجن کو امیجن کیا گیا ہے جس طرح کے پلانز اس ریجن کے لیے بنائے گئے ہیں وہ پلانز اس جگہ کی ڈیولپمنٹ کے نہیں ہیں وہ دا اسٹیٹ 
or um, the deep state is not interested in developing the region. They're more interested in using that region for their own benefits. So um, when resources come to their hands, then inshallah, why not develop it? Uh, Tariq Ali absolutely does that because um, jo uh, class system tha us time mein, like i said khani elite banayi gayi thi usse pehle bahut egalitarian system tha aur class system us tarah koi exist nahi karta tha but jab khani elite bana di gayi ek landlord class from within the pashtuns bana di gayi unko land de diya gaya unko power de di gayi over these people tab wo log um, uh, pashtun interests mein itna interested nahi the they were more interested in being used as puppets of the British government, right? Um, so, when you are in the middle of the world, the privileged class or the upper class, they are not really interested in letting go of that privilege and they are not interested in letting go of that comfort either, right? And that power. Um, and we see that today as well. Um, so, yeah, I think when that system is in the Jirga system, bhi kafi, um, Kharab ho gaya tha uske baad, and it was no longer based on uh, wisdom, right? Ke wise logo ko beach mein lao. It was more based on ma- maleko ko leke aao, uh, jo khan hai, unko leke aao, and they were basically the elite and they had power over decision making. Uh, whether or not that dis- those decisions were good for the people um, is a different thing, but I mean, it's not a different thing. Those decisions were not great for the people because th- those decisions were meant to be taken to be great for. Um, the British, right? Or um, what their um, interests in the region. Minerva, how do you think the stereotyping of the Pashtun has benefited capitalism historically and how's, how does that pan out today? How does that relate to the war economy? Very interesting. Um, so, Minerva, wonderful question. <laughs> um, how do you think the... Um, so the stereotyping of Pashtuns, like I said, has benefited uh, the war economy and capitalism greatly, right? Because when I talked about that when these officials were there, when they were there, when British officials were there, and when they were in that region, and colonial vulnerability was there, then उसमें सिर्फ ये बात नहीं थी कि वो बड़े डरे हुए थे और बड़े मासूम और मायूस थे कि उस रीजन को कंट्रोल करना था बट दोस पीपल वर आल्सो स्मार्ट इनफ टू रियलाइज कि ओ यू नो बाय बाय समहाउ एक तो um, इस चीज को um, इस्तेमाल करके ये जो स्टीरियोटाइपिंग हुई हुई है राइट right? एक तो ये चीज हो गई इस्तेमाल हो गई दूसरी तरफ ये बात इस्तेमाल हो गई कि वहां उस एरिया से एक कम्युनिकेशन भी नहीं हो रही और वो एरिया एक बिल्कुल इनविजिबल है इट्स इट इट फंक्शंस इन अ जोन ऑफ इनविजिबिलिटी एंड पीपल डोंट हैव एक्सेस टू इट राइट सो देयर इज नो काउंटर नैरेटिव काउंटर नैरेटिव नहीं है एंड दीस ऑफिशियल्स नॉट ओनली हैव पावर um of the pen right uh, but they also have access to power centers and they also have access to newspapers jisme wo likh sakte hain ki ye ye jo kaun sa hath hai ye ye jo log hain ye pagal hain theek hai ye they're militants and they're crazy and we need protection right so when you when you combine such knowledge with a lack of communication you can acquire a lot of resources for such vulnerable for such you know um constructed vulnerability ki hum itne vulnerable hain hame paisa do right so um us time mein ye tha um isme ye bhi bahut hai and i think this is something that's missing from nationalist uh nationalism ke narratives ya pakistan ke creation ke narratives that uh frontier ki jo volatility thi ya wahan se jo resistance aa rahi thi um us region se uh, that had a lot to do with uh, uh, weakening uh, the british colonial um, system right and that had a lot to do with them backing off eventually as well because waha unhone itni troop deployment ki bhi thi itni resources wo waha pe laga rahe the because of this vulnerability right ke um, baki jo um, colonial india tha waha pe obviously they couldn't then deploy so many um, forces to fight off nationalist struggles right and that is something that's not mentioned in um, in um, kya kehte hain partition his jo hamari pakistan ki partition history hai usme nahi mention ye kiya jata and obviously war economy ki jo baat hai abhi um, because of um, how this region is completely uh, closed off it's very interesting how um, 
because of this lack of communication and because of this lack of accountability um uh us area mein uh kis tarah uh, drug trade uh, bhi um, ho raha hai kis tarah border जब ऐसे एलिमेंट्स जो हैं जो डार्क एलिमेंट्स हैं वो खुलवाना चाहें तो वो बॉर्डर खुल भी जाता है देर इज़ नो देर इज़ नो प्रॉब्लम एट ऑल दैट ऑब्वियसली देन हेल्प्स फ्लरिशिंग द वॉर इकोनमी राइट इट इट आल्सो हेल्प्स के व्हेन यू पेंट पाश्तून इन अ सर्टन वे एंड यू स्वेयर बाय द वॉलिटिलिटी ऑफ द रीजन एंड इट्स पीपल राइट इट ऑल्सो हैज़ हिस्टोरिकली इन पाकिस्तान हेल्प्ड acquire a lot of uh, uh resources and a lot of money and a lot of funding from international uh bodies and uh countries as well right so i mean america ki jo funding thi wo isi basis pe thi ke you know um in lo ke sa ye log to bahut volatile hain they uh, can't be dealt with otherwise they can't be um Uh, yeah, dealt with otherwise हालांकि जो तालिबान की पॉलिसी थी वो कहाँ से निकली थी वो इंडिजनस एक मूवमेंट uh, थी या वो स्टेट्स ने ही उसको फंड किया था वो एक अलग बात है बट या आई मीन दिस होल स्टेरियो टाइपिंग बिजनेस हैड अ लॉट टू डू विद हाउ मच रिसोर्स वर एक्वायर्ड एंड हाउ द ड्रग इकोनमी एंड ऑल अदर सच ब्लैक इकोनमी इज फ्लरिश्ड एट द टाइम how does the stereotyping of the pashtun benefit the nation state building project um it really helps um it really helps because uh the pashtun stereotyping pashtuns as inherently volatile basically means that they're degenerates right that they're uh, that they um, either have to um enter the zone of civility by renouncing their identity right and becoming one with the nation state and nation state jo ke uh, pakistan jis tarah imagine karta hai nation state ek उर्दू स्पीकिंग सुन्नी एलिट का उर्दू स्पीकिंग सुन्नी नेशन स्टेट जिसकी और कोई आइडेंटिटी या लॉयल्टीज ना हो और वो अपनी हिस्ट्री भी भूल जाए तो स्टेरियो टाइप करना पश्तून को रियली बेनिफिट्स इट राइट बिकॉज इट सेज दैट एंड इट्स द सेम विद द बलोच राइट के इफ दीज पीपल कॉन्ट कॉन्ट बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस रेलम ऑफ सिविलिटी एंड दिस रेलम ऑफ नॉट जस्ट सिविलिटी बट दिस रेलम ऑफ लेजिटमेसी कि ये एक लेजिटमेट आइडेंटिटी है जिसकी हम बात करेंगे ये लोग नहीं एंटर कर सकते तो ये या तो गदार है या तो ये पागल हैं और या तो इनको समझ नहीं आती एंड मोस्टली गदारी का जो लेबल है वो अभी फिलहाल लगाया जा रहा है इसके ऊपर सो इट रियली डज बेनिफिट इट Adnan Hussain yes i did talk about 3g 4g internet service there is no 3g 4g internet service there is no way of um i mean jama khar khar kamar massacre bhi hua tha tab recordings jis tarah share ki gayi thi log logon ne jo videos banayi thi they had to come to down to towns um, and cities jahan pe uh, internet access unko phir mila tha and then they managed to you know share uh these videos videos with people but otherwise because there is no internet facility there that also becomes a huge problem in communicating not just grievances but also having uh, some kind of um a connection with the outside world and outside world me sirf pa- pakistan nahi aa jata but outside world me puri duniya bhi aa jati hai jahan pe communication um generally bahut mushkil hai because there there is no internet service and um yeah Georg sorry i'm reading through the whole thing yes georg um so i did uh, talk about this i think i i i, I talked about it a, a bit like before your question wonderful question by the way um uh, yeah i mean elite classes like i said uh, they uh, it was a very egalitarian society uh, prior to the bit british meddling with it um uh there was a khani elite there was uh, there 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 were maliks you know and these people were the landed elite and they were given lands to then um exercise control over these areas and be the eyes and the ears um um 
and the mouths as well of these British officials. So yeah, I mean that 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 was definitely a thing um, in Pashtun areas, and th- this is also definitely a thing right now. And this is something I didn't actually talk about because um, I thought I was rambling on too much, so I didn't get to the PTM part of it. But um, yeah, um, even in even in in the in the case of PTM, the way that the state has dealt with them, I mean, other than propaganda, censorship, and downright violence, is that. Um, any kind of, uh, you know, uh, sweet talk that would they want to do with them or any kind of negotiation that they want to do with them is done through this landed elite, right? Is done through these Khans and these Maliks who, you know, com- uh, uh, would go out and communicate something in Urdu, but when they're speaking with these people in Pashto and because Pashto is not known by um, um uh, the rest of the, I mean, is is not a widely known or spoken language in the country uh, uh, <clears throat> by other groups. Um, that you know, they 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 try to work out solutions with them, but then completely um, say something else behind their backs. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, these these local elites are definitely still being used to somehow negotiate or somehow exercise power over these people. And interestingly enough, these local elites are also being used to um, popularize and further uh, the narrative of the state. So for example, there was an incident. Um, um uh where there was uh, there was an incident in in Khesor where there was alleged uh, th- there were allegations of um uh, allegations of harassment were made uh, against security forces right and um that that became that became a huge thing and the way that the state um somehow tried to like um uh cover that up was that they invited these uh, maliks and these khans uh, so the landed elite basically, and they made them like um, debunk it, and they made them say that you know no such thing happened, and this is all like uh, these are all rumors, and we spoke to the woman, we spoke to the family, and uh, people are just trying to um, trying to take advantage of the situation. So basically, they became the mouthpiece of uh, the state and the deep state. Um, socialist strategies um i think definitely of course we do need a workers movement um and i think um the pashtun tahafas movement the ptm is definitely a working a working class movement uh, it's a it's a grassroots movement um very uh, it, it's a grassroots movement talking about grassroots issues right and they also talk i mean um one can say that the kind of criticism that's coming from them is in terms of you know how <clears throat> elites have elite Pashtuns have uh, you know not really uh, helped them in 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 their project and also haven't really uh, helped them in in the oppression that these people faced and also the elite in general they talk about how they it and by elite in general I mean elite provinces how their resources have been taken from them how those with power have uh, unleashed a regime of terror on their areas by humiliating them, by, um, you know, uh, stopping them at check posts and, um, yeah, humiliating them. So, um, So yeah, I think I think um, a workers' movement is definitely needing needed, and um, one that's obviously led by socialist um, is led through socialist strategies. And I think that's something that the PTM is doing and needs to um, work on more. And then we've got a few PTM fans. Zafarullah Kakar, um, how much the PTM did its part as counter narrative and what it should do further? I think they've done wonderfully, to be honest. Um, the fact that they still haven't retaliated, despite the state really um, trying to make them retaliate, right? Ke koshish to bilkul ho rahi hai ke unko violence ke upar uksaya jaye, um, violence ki taraf unko push kiya jaye. Um, Lekin uh, abhi tak is tarah ki koi violence nahi aai unki taraf, um, unki taraf se. And I think that that needs to continue. I think um, considering ke, um, considering ke ye movement jis tarah ki hai aur jin logo ke beech mein nikli hai, they've suffered um, because of because of this production of Pashtun identity ke ye log violent hai aur militant hai. And uh, sirf colonial time mein to chalo produce ho gai. Lekin aage bhi jis tarah, I mean, uh, jo maine, um, uh, 
अमेरिकन टेक्स्ट पढ़े थे बहुत बड़ी गलती की थी लेकिन वो जो अमेरिकन टेक्स थे बेसिकली आई आई वेंट थ्रू वन आई केम टू पाकिस्तान बीच में और मैं किताबें इकट्ठी कर रही थी एंड आई बेसिकली चेक द मार्केट राइट कि किस तरह की किताबें हैं इस्लामाबाद और लाहौर के मैंने किए थे कि किस तरह की किताबें हैं जो कि पाकिस्तान जो कि पश्तूंस के ऊपर मार्केट में पाई जाती हैं और वो इतनी कोई खौफनाक अजीब व गरीब इनएक्यूरेट किताबें थी जिसके अंदर जो अमेरिकन ये जो मिलिट्री के डिप्लॉय हुए हुए लोग थे वो जब अफगान अफगानिस्तान से जंग शंग करके वापस आ जाते थे अमेरिका तो उनको लगता था कि वो ना आप किताबें लिख सकते हैं बड़ी फैक्चुअल किस्म की तो उसके अंदर जिस तरह की बातें थी पश्तून्स के बारे में लिखी हुई देवर देवर हरफ एक एंड इट्स अमेजिंग हाउ दीज टेक्स वर वाइडली अवेलेबल इन दीज मार्केट्स एंड देर वॉज नो काउंटर नारेटिव टू इट जो फैक्चुअल किताबें थी जो अच्छी किताबें थी जो कि हैं ये नहीं है कि नहीं पाई जाती um, वो नहीं थी इन स्टोर में एंड आई थिंक के um, जब उस सेंस में डिस्कोर्स की इतनी कमी है तो डेफिनेटली जो कि पीटीएम का डिस्कोर्स है वो फिर और भी इस जगह में ज़रूरी हो जाता है कि वो लोग इसको चैलेंज कर सकें लेकिन उसमें फिर मसला ये है कि जो मेन स्ट्रीम आपकी मीडिया है जो कि आपकी मेजॉरिटी लोग देखती है वो उसके ऊपर ये नैरेटिव बिल्कुल नहीं आ रहा और वो नैरेटिव जिस तरह आ भी रहा है वो बिल्कुल कम्प्लीटली लाइक opposite to what the ptm is doing aa raha hai so i think that's problematic but i think the st- the struggle continues they should stick to their program zara sayed what are the causes of pashtun nationalism in the context of pakistan in your perspective um i think zara i i, I spoke about this but, but br- briefly i think it's about uh it's it's about resources it's about um um being lesser children of god it's about being ignored in term, terms of development it's about um you know owning their identity it's about stereotyping it's 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 also about the war economy it's about how these areas have been used as a marshland as um यू नो जोन्स ऑफ इंडिफरेंस जहां पे कुछ भी कर लो जो भी कर लो ना कोई पूछेगा ना कोई कुछ कहेगा आसिफ um, नहीं uh, उससे पहले क्लास स्ट्रक्चर का लाइक आई सेड इतना कोई कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं था इट वॉज प्रिटी इगैलिटेरियन एट द टाइम इकरा हाउ डीज यूज पोटेंशियल टू डी कंस्ट्रक्ट मेन स्ट्रीम नारेटिव एसोसिएटेड इकरा आपके सवाल से पहले किसी और ने इसी तरह की बात पूछी थी जिसमें मैंने इसका जवाब दे दिया है पश्तून माशरे के अंदर जितना है कम उम्र है उसको बुनियाद बनाकर हमारे जी बिल्कुल आई ऑल्सो डेफिनेटली डोर्स अख्तर अख्तर आपने बिल्कुल सही बात की और um, आई थिंक मुझसे ज्यादा बेहतर आपने जवाब दे दिया है फरहत को के ये जो जिस तरह हमें डिप्राइव रखा गया है एजुकेशन से उस उसकी वजह से बहुत मुश्किल हो जाता है अंदर की तरफ से आपके नैरेटिव्स निकले या आप एज अ सोसाइटी भी बेहतर हो कम्युनिटी थैंक यू आमिर जमान आई एम ग्लैड यू गाइस लाइक इट इंशाल्लाह कोशिश करूंगी कि पश्तो में नेक्स्ट टाइम uh, मैं ये लेक्चर कर सकूं also what is your analysis of the same left engagement with the pashto national question or any national question because on the one we see a completely same problem and largely standard that projects the
yeah uh, minerva i do feel ke uh, the left needs needs to engage with uh, the pashtun national question uh, more and uh, same as the baloch um question uh, but as far as the pashtun national question is concerned i do feel that um i mean at least um i haven't been a part of the left and i haven't really i'm sorry like i i will give this disclaimer i uh, i haven't engaged with the left as much because uh, mai meri zyada left ke sath uh, jo association hai jab mai aayi hu december ke end mein wapas tab se meri hui hai to um and i think i've discussed this with you as well i don't know the intricacies of um how you know the left has been lacking um which is very um sad and shameful uh but i feel ke um jitna maine abhi apne thode time mein note kiya hai maine ye dekha hai ke um national quest uh, jo uh, pashtuns ki taraf at least um and i think i can't speak uh, for the baloch i think um uh, डेफिनेटली उनको वो खुद भी बोलते हैं और उनको बोलना चाहिए वो अपने आप को बेहतर रिप्रेजेंट कर सकते हैं लेकिन पर्सनस का जितना मैंने देखा है देर इज एंड द काइंड ऑफ सपोर्ट दैट दे हैव फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट इज एंड इज एंड एज ग्रेट एज आई वुड एक्सपेक्ट इट टू बी आई डू फील दैट एंड आई ऑल्सो फील कि ऑन द ग्राउंड जो सपोर्ट है वो नहीं एग्जिस्ट करता है एटलीस्ट लाहौर लेफ्ट में um, मैंने इतनी कोई इंथुजियाज़म नहीं देखी कि कोई uh, उनकी और उन उनका ऑर्गेनाइज किया जाए कोई फॉर एग्जांपल सिट इन और कोई प्रोटेस्ट एंड आई थिंक दैट हैज़ अ लॉट टू डू विद द काइंड ऑफ फियर दैट एग्जिस्ट इज वेल एंड द काइंड ऑफ प्रोपोगंडा एंड सेंसरशिप दैट यू नो द स्टेट रिस्पॉन्ड्स विद एंड ऑल्सो द वायलेंस दैट द स्टेट रिस्पॉन्ड्स विद राइट सो आई फील के द लेफ्ट डेफिनेटली डज नीड टू डू मोर and especially i feel ke uh, working class uh, ke ke jo log hain unko definitely mobilize karna chahiye because there is a and and this is i mean this wasn't even known to me for the longest time unfortunately because ignorance um to har jagah pe maujood hai but uh, urban centers ke andar bhi uh, kafi zyada presence hai pashtuns ke andar especially punjab ke andar bhi kafi zyada um presence here and i think mobilizing them and offering them uh support it's not that they're not politically conscious people but i feel like uh definitely considering that they're easy targets because they are working class people that they need um support and companionship uh from those engaged with the le- left who are more privileged and are better placed in society right um but yeah i feel like i haven't really seen that kind of enthusiasm the only thing i saw was after manzoor manzoor's arrest ke liberty chowk pe hua tha protest but that was also i mean uh, the turnout was um it it wasn't as great as i as i would have expected um it to be um जी जमाल खान बिल्कुल ये मैं भी अग्री करती हूँ कि स्टेट की इंटरवेंशन के बाद स्टेट की इंटरवेंशन पश्तून कल्चर इंटरनली भी मतलब देर आर लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स आर अ वेरी फ्लॉड विद पश्तून कल्चर बट आई फील लाइक हमें कभी ये पता नहीं चलेगा कि पश्तून कल्चर किस हद तक इवॉल्व होता क्योंकि इवॉल्व उसको होने नहीं दी होने नहीं दिया उसको इतना इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज कर दिया उसको इतना क्रिस्टलाइज कर दिया इतना पक्का कर दिया उसको और उसके बाद सिर्फ पक्का नहीं कर दिया गया इंस्टीट्यूशंस के अंदर और लॉज के अंदर सो बाय लॉज आई मीन अब एफसीआर क्या था एफसीआर एक उसी नॉलेज की नॉलेज को पक्का करना था ना कि नहीं पश्तून के लिए यही लॉ हो सकता है इन ये तो इतने अलग किस्म के इंसान हैं कि इनके ऊपर एक प्रॉपर लीगल सिस्टम या जुडिशल सिस्टम तो ये लोग बर्दाश्त ही नहीं कर पाएंगे राइट तो जब आपने इस तरह का उसको 
वो कर दिया पक्का कर दिया उनके कल्चर को उसके बाद वो कल्चर किस तरह इवॉल्व कर सकता वो हमें ना कभी पता चला और शायद काफ़ी देर तक हमें पता चलेगा भी नहीं कि किस तरह होता सो या आई डेफिनेटली एग्री कि स्टेट की इंटरवेंशन एंड इन्वॉल्वमेंट के बाद उस कल्चर को काफ़ी मसले एक इवॉल्व नहीं हो पाया और दूसरी बात जिस तरह स्टेट ने उस कल्चरल कुछ चीज़ें कुछ चीज़ों के ऊपर एम्फेसिस भी ज़्यादा प्लेस किया सो फॉर एग्जांपल पश्तून मैस्कुलिनिटी हो गई या पश्तून कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ऑनर हो गया या पश्तून कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ यू नो बदला लेना हो गया कि बदले लेते हैं और ब्लड फ्यूड्स होते हैं आई थिंक उन चीज़ों को इतनी इम्पोर्टेंस दे दी गई और इस हद तक एम्पलीफाई कर दिया गया और वाजे कर दिया गया कि जो बाकी चीज़ें थी उन उस कल्चर के अंदर जो अच्छी थी उन चीज़ों को आगे लाया ही नहीं गया उनके ऊपर तो बात की ही नहीं गई तो ऑब्वियसली मतलब इट्स अबाउट व्हाट वाज एम्फोसाइज मोर व्हाट वाज यू नो कंसिडर्ड एज द प्राइमरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ पर्सन आइडेंटिटी um i i uh, to be very honest with nova i i do feel personally that they need to um you're right i think uh, they really need to step back from figures like uh, ashraf ghani i understand uh, that this whole idea of larobar yo afghan right that Af afghans are essentially a nation and um, it's all right to um take pride in 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 take pride in 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 that right so by nation they mean uh, they they don't they don't mean in terms of geography by nation they mean in terms of identity in terms of ethnicity right um i do uh, stand by that i do feel that there is no reason to um uh, forgo that i mean it's the same as uh, punjabis uh, punjabis um in in uh, pakistan and punjabis in india uh, saying that they're punjabis and that's absolutely all right of course um and i think the state doesn't need to react so badly to uh, ptm saying that but i do feel that they need to distance themselves from people like ashraf ghani who will obviously i mean i feel uh, could take advantage of um um of the situation and of the movement i'm not saying that he is taking advantage of the movement in terms of like giving them money jo ke pakistan state kehte hai but take advantage of them in the fact ke you know do uh, agar pakistan ki riyasat ke sath ji ashraf ghani ko koi masla ho gaya ya unki aapas mein ladai ho gayi to ashraf ghani ne you know just to pinch them a little bit us uh, unhone uh, ptm ki फेवर में कोई ट्वीट कर दी राइट सो आई थिंक पी टी एम डज नीड टू कीप द मूवमेंट एज इंडिजिनस एज पॉसिबल एज ग्रास रूट एज पॉसिबल आई डोंट थिंक आई थिंक देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ इन दैम देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ लिजिटमेसी टू दैम दे डू नॉट नीड टू सीक द लिजिटमेसी ऑफ इम्पीरियलिस पॉपिट्स लाइक अशरफ वनी एंड एंड आई थिंक more than anything they need to build a working class um solidarity uh within the movement and that's the kind of support that they need to appeal to right and need to work on as opposed to working on um uh, bourgeois uh, bu on 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 the bourgeoisie politicians yeah unka support lene ke liye sorry guys i just realized my battery is as always uh, running out um to um us kism ka support unko wo karna chahiye un us kism ke jo ke shuru mein unhone kiya tha shuru mein jab unhone logo ko invite karna shuru kiya tha apne stage pe उसमें औरतें भी थी उसमें बच्चे भी थे उसमें वर्किंग क्लास लोग भी थे एंड वी आल्सो नीड टू रियलाइज दैट दिस मूवमेंट वाज पॉपुलराइज मोर बिकॉज ऑफ अ वर्किंग क्लास पर्सन लाइक नकीबोला मैसूद राइट हु वाज किल्ड एंड ही वाज अ वर्किंग क्लास पर्सन इन कराची एंड आई थिंक दैट्स द रीजन वाई द मूवमेंट garnered so so much support because it wasn't just about identity it was also about working class struggles it was also about um you know privilege and the lack of it um so i do feel that um they need to advance that kind of solidarity as opposed to solidarity with imperialist puppets nasrullah khan wazir sahib um sorry again um 
Yeah, I, I, I definitely think that uh, uh, PTM, while um, I mean, PTM, I think that is something that PTM is doing. Um, ke, अपने आप को रिप्रेजेंट करते हुए वो सिर्फ अपनी पॉलिटिकल एजेंसी को नहीं वो करे बट एट द सेम टाइम वो कल्चर की भी बात कर रहे हैं और आई थिंक उनकी उनकी जो ये नॉन वायलेंस की एक स्ट्रैटेजी है दैट इज नॉट जस्ट सिंपली कि बस उन्होंने सोचा तो उन्होंने कर लिया बट आई थिंक आई थिंक दैट्स अ वेरी स्मार्ट स्ट्रैटेजी एंड दैट्स अ वेरी पोलिटिकली सोफिस्टिकेटेड स्ट्रैटेजी जिससे आई थिंक देर देर सॉर्ट ऑफ रिस्पॉन्डिंग एंड आई थिंक दिस इज समथिंग देव टॉक्ट अबाउट इज वेल राइट के it's their way of responding to these narratives it is their way of uh, physically um, uh, you know talking about this narrative ke you know we're not violent we're not going to uh, hum violence kar hi nahi sakte aur na hum karne wale hain chahe aap jo marzi kare to i think ke wo jo cultural cultural or political agency hai um, wo represent kar rahe hain apni movement ke through and i think it's uh, brilliant Yusuf Zai, um, Ashna, uh, don't you think that there are some hidden forces who are killing innocent people at the Pakhtunkhwa land just incite them for violence and weaken or try to break Pakistan? Um, I think I, I think I did talk about this. That um, uh, people are being incited. Um, you know, that they are violence. Ki taraf और सिर्फ पी टी एम के लोगों को ही नहीं वो किया जा रहा बट जनरली भी लोगों को किया जा रहा है सो या आई थिंक आई एग्री विद दिस बट आई मीन सिंस बट आई थिंक दिस इज जस्ट यू नो स्पेक्यूलेशन वेदर नॉट इट स्पेक्यूलेशन इज अ डिफरेंट थिंग बट आई लाइक टू कीप थिंग्स एकेडेमिक बट या आई आई डू थिंक पर्सनली दैट दैट्स बींग डन to what extent the emergence of taliban and pashtun nationalism correlated to one another i think pashtun nationalism in in terms of um ptm and ptm jo ke um is does represent pashtuns right because they have a huge support of pashtuns considering uh ke unke jalso pe aur unke protest pe kitne log jaate hain so i think ये जो मूवमेंट है दैट इज काइंड ऑफ नॉट जस्ट अ काउंटर नैरेटिव टू द स्टेट लेकिन इट इज अ काउंटर नैरेटिव टू द तालिबान इज वेल राइट इट्स देर बेसिकली नॉट जस्ट चैलेंजिंग द स्टेट एंड इट्स नैरेटिव लेकिन वो तालिबान के नैरेटिव को भी चैलेंज कर रहे हैं एंड देर बेस एंड दैट्स ऑल्सो वाई आई मीन देर आर सोर्सेज जिन्होंने मतलब ये ट्विटर पर भी लिखा है और जनरली के तालिबान थ्रेटन कर रहे हैं लोगों को अभी भी हैं देर इज सम काइंड ऑफ प्रेजेंस ऑफ द तालिबान इन द फ्रंटियर रीजन जो कि यू नो दे आर थ्रेटनिंग पीपल टू यू नो स्टे क्वाइट एंड नॉट बी पोलिटिकली एक्टिव एंड आई थिंक वो एक थ्रेट एग्जिस्ट करता है पश्तूंस का पश्तून नेशनलिज्म का तालिबान की तरफ एंड आई थिंक पी टी एम इज एन इज एन आउटकम ऑफ वॉट द स्टेट did um in the frontier and it's also an outcome of what the taliban did in the frontier and i think it's the people's way of saying that you know enough is enough thank you amir zaman i try my best but there's still a lot that i don't know and would like to work on and perhaps add more to the discourse Minerva what is your opinion on how Minerva I love your questions by the way uh what is your opinion on how afghan refugees are demonized in pakistan especially given how those refugees lost their homes and had to migrate to pakistan because of a war that our country supported in their country why are afghan refugees a threat to the nation state project of our national bourgeoisie wonderful questions this requires like a separate i feel like your questions require um uh, a separate uh, what do you call it study circle and i'm thinking of like noting them down and then answering them in a, a separate study circle if possible um lekin ha um afghan refugees ko bahut demonize kiya jata hai i think i mean considering the fact that they're still not considered as nationals offered citizenship of the citizenship um uh, they basically exist as uh, a, um undocumented ghosts in, in in the country there are also reports ke unke jo refugee camps hain ya jo not sorry not refugee camps but jin abadiyon mein wo rehte hain unke ghar abhi tak raid kiye jate hain uh, police wale unko raid unke gharon ko raid karte hain wo rishwat के लिए रिश्वत ले लेते हैं बेस्ड ऑन ऑब्वियसली देर आइडेंटिटी एंड हाउ दे एग्जिस्ट इन पाकिस्तान राइट कर लेते हैं एंड दे वो पैसे दे देते हैं एंड दे गो अवे एंड दे कम बैक 
you know some other time uh, it's also interesting ke abhi pichle ek saal mein jitna maine note kiya tha especially jab uh, beech mein uh, ptm ki kafi uh, ke ptm ke kafi jalse hona shuru ho gaye the um, i also noticed that there was a surge in um associating criminality with afghan identity um i don't know ki ye kisi ye again uh, the, i'm sorry this is um a not a something that's an academically verifiable um thing but jitni meri observation thi ki us time mein uh, bahut ye narrative tha ki ha aur wo jo chor tha ya ha wo jo rapist tha wo jo tha na wo afghan tha wo afghan tha and there was this constant discussion about afghan identity and its association um and it was constantly being associated with criminality and that really makes one um think about how criminality was associated by the british with certain identities as well and was codified in um, in law right um so yeah i mean it, it, it's really hypocritical and it's really uh, you know shameful as well that these people were um, the reason that they're here in this country is not because humne koi batir mara tha refugees ko accept karne ka ya humne bada unke upar ehsaan kiya tha the reason that they're in this position currently is because what the state of pakistan decided to do with its policy towards pakistan and how it decided to collaborate with the us government um so i mean it's technically i'm sorry um it, it is really their doing right um to ye jo aksar matlab imran khan sahab bhi baatein karte hain ki humne itne bade itne itni zyada itne zyada refugees aaj tak kisi ne kisi ne nahi accept kiye well we had to right we we had to because um we were the perpetrators and we basically led them to the condition that Uh, we 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 pushed these refugees we we pushed those people to become refugees right so it it was an outcome of our our policy and it's great that for once we did take responsibility of it but then again we had no we still have no a mechanism in place just me hum in refugees ke liye uske beyond bhi kuch kar sake right um afghan refugees are a threat to the nation state project because it's I mean and I think this is the reason why they're also not being given any citizenship because I mean apart from the different um identities that exist within uh Pakistan jo ke they're you know wrestling for control and they're rest- wrestling for autonomy and they're wrestling for some kind of you know uh space within um um uh, पाकिस्तान उसके साथ साथ एक अफगान आइडेंटिटी भी आ जाए तो वो तो बहुत बड़ा मसला हो जाता है कि ऑलरेडी भी जो हैंडल करने की कोशिश करें वो नहीं हैंडल किए जा रहे तो और भी हो गए इट ऑल्सो एड्स अफगान रेफ्यूजीज ऑल्सो एड टू द पश्तून डेमोग्राफिक राइट डिपेंडिंग ऑन ऑब्वियसली के uh are the afghan pashtuns you know um because afghanistan ke andar bhi i know we conflate afghans with pashtuns but uh, afghanistan ke andar bhi bahut zyada ethnic identities hain to but if they're afghan uh, pashtuns that then obviously um unki collaboration with um pashtun identity and then pashtuns ki jo um afghan afghanness hai jo ke wo kehte hain ki we're afghans right um if that somehow gets more people from the afghan refugees and wo ek collaboration ho jaye to that's obviously uh, going to be very problematic as well for these um, national bourgeoisie not just in terms of the nation state project in terms of you know who is a pakistani but also in terms of you know power and votes and um uh kya kehte hain uh, the census and you know kitne pashtuns hain aur kitne punjabi hain aur kitna kaun hai so yeah i definitely think afghans are um a threat and that's why we'd like them to be uh, just roaming around with no identification and no citizenship and as ghosts in the country as opposed to actual citizens and i think it, it is something that we need to and we should offer them if we truly do feel that we're really nice people and we <laughs> we've done them a huge favor then i think why not take it to the next step uh kasim uh i don't know about this uh specific uh, stereotype that you're talking about by the pashtun wala um i'm really sorry um lekin jahan tak aap military establishment ki baat kar rahe hain ki pashtuns are second partners i'm um, thank you for asking that because uh ye jo sorry ye jo baat hai 
फाइनली ये मैंने नहीं की क्योंकि मैं एक्सपेक्ट कर रही थी कि ये सवालों में आएगी और ये हमेशा सवालों में आती है कि यू नो मिलिट्री इस्टेब्लिशमेंट में पश्तून हैं तो आप लोग क्या कहते हैं कि आप लोगों के पास पावर नहीं है दे आर टू थिंग्स आई होप आई डोंट लाइक रिमेंबर थर्ड वन एंड देन रामबल ऑन बट द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट द द होल आइडिया ऑफ द ओनली आप जब किसी को पावर देते हो आप पावर बहुत सोच के देते हो राइट दिस इज ऑल्सो अ वे ऑफ आई मीन द सेम वे दैट खान एंड मलिक्स वर गिवन पावर टू रूल ओवर पश्तून Uh, for someone else was a policy, right? It wasn't because they liked just a few Pashtuns and unko ji zamine de ni, right? It's the same way Pashtuns. Uh, my analysis of this is that Pashtuns who are sec- so-called second partners in uh, the military are because they are a way to, you know. help the establishment exercise control over these areas right ke these people can be the eyes and the ears and the mouthpieces but in this case eyes and ears um of the establishment in these pashtun areas right so aap ek aisi elite create kar dete ho ek uh, uske andar idare ke andar jo ke ek uh, aisi community se hoti hai jo ke bahut oppressed hoti hai आप उस ऑप्रेस्ड कम्युनिटी से पाँच दस पंद्रह बीस लोगों को उठा लेते हो उनको पावर दे देते हो और उनको कहते हो कि अगर तुम्हें और उस पावर का ना थोड़ा उनको मज़ा भी आ जाता है ठीक है जिसको कहते हैं कि चस्का आ जाता है पावर का तो जब पावर का उनको मज़ा आ जाता है उसके बाद उस, उनको कहते हैं कि अच्छा अब तुम्हें मज़ा आ गया तुम्हें तुम बहुत कम्फर्टेबल भी हो गए हो इस प्रिवलेज में और इस पावर में तो हाउ अबाउट यू नाउ you know exercise control over these oppressed people even more right to ke hamari policies tum ja ke in jagon mein lagao because tumhe to culture bhi samajh aate hai tumhe to zuban bhi samajh aati hai tumhe to generally you know navigate bhi karna un areas mein tumhare liye bahut aasan hoga to my analysis is that that is one reason why there are a lot of pashtuns in the bureaucracy in the military establishment the second thing the whole knowledge production jo ki maine baat ki thi the construction of pashtun identity as um a martial race right as say, basically saying that pashtuns are amazing at firing guns um and feuds and fights and war and militancy um and there is nothing else that they're good at there is nothing else that they've done in their lives um aur to kuch hai hi nahi na associated with pashtun identity right so then when you make them i wouldn't say stakeholders when you give them some kind of space in the military establishment you're also sort of um feeding into that idea right martial race theory tied to giving them space in the military establishment you know ke you know this is the only kind of function that you can perform in this country and that is to be a part of the military and that is to be a part of the military on our terms you cannot be a part of mil- of of the military um on your own terms so that is my response to that and that is my analysis um of this whole thing ke ji wo kafi majority hai pashtuns ki uh military ke andar oh zor se bol sorry 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 main piche ho gayi thi thoda sa ओ नसरुल्ला खान वजी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन कि उनकी अपनी क्या एजेंसी थी इस नॉलेज प्रोडक्शन के अंदर दिस इज समथिंग दैट आई एक्चुअली डेयर टॉक अबाउट इन माय डिसिटेशन एज वेल कि सिंपली टू से कि यू नो दे वर पैसिव रिसीवर्स ऑफ कि उनका तो कोई कि बस ब्रिटिश जी लिखते जा रहे थे और ब्रिटिश जी बस फिक्शनलाइज कर रहे थे और फेब्रिकेट कर रहे थे और पर्सून की अपनी जी कोई भी कोई भी उनका इनपुट नहीं था इस knowledge production ke andar um, i think that is incorrect uh, you're absolutely correct that is incorrect because that somehow takes away the agency from these pashtuns the agency they also in a way probably exercised in constructive constructing this uh, identity right they did not have agency in 
countering this identity formation, but they surely did have agency in um, contributing to um, this identity formation. And I'll, uh, and I'll explain why. Because ye jo, uh, British, uh, jo bar -bar positionality ki baat kari thi ke, you know, military officers the, officials the, to naturally jis tarah unho ne identity ke baare mein likhna tha, wo uh, ek military tunnel vision se hi likhna tha. Unko kya tha ki unki uh, personal lives kaisi hain, unka aur culture, cultural jo aur cheeze hain, you know, not related to resistance and um, feuds and war and honor. Uske alawa jo cultural cheeze hain, unko kya tha, unko koi interest right so they were only interested in things that were important to them and uh, their control and their power right so uh, naturally wo log to un cheezon ko observe kar rahe the but aage se ye baat nahi hai ki jab uh, colonial officials ye form kar rahe the response nahi aa raha tha obviously pashtuns as well they were resisting they were resisting because there was an expansionist policy so jab elphinstone ne favorably likha pashtuns ke bare mein wo isliye likha because not because wo british alliance kar raha tha but wo isliye bhi likha ki because jo pashtuns ko equally treat kiya ja raha tha the pashtuns were also kind to him right they were also offering companionship and allegiance to the british and that is why they did contribute to that identity formation similarly when things went south and british started the british started expanding and um, you know wo uh, aggressive ho gaye and they started treating pashtuns as a problem right so naturally the pashtuns also started resisting and jo um, uh, jange bhi hui banduke bhi chali aur bhi bahut kuch hua right to wo jab hua to naturally the british were like oh ye to uh, martial race hai aur ye to bahut resist kar rahe hain aur ye to bahut hi um, you know they're very very militant in in their energy so their conception was uh, constructed because of the response that these Pashtuns were giving. So they, so the Pashtuns did have agency. Uh, they were responding and somehow those responses were being recorded in how the British were perceiving the Pashtuns, right? But the problem is ki that perception was very limited. Wo, um, ek holistic understanding nahi thi Pashtuns ki. Wo ek bohat military tunnel vision jiski mili, mili, military officials ki unke interests ki aur uski taraf jo resistance aa rahi thi obviously resistance aati hai us resistance ki us resistance ka analysis tha aur wo record ho raha tha but baki jo aspects the pashtun identity ke wo nahi dekhe ja rahe the but the way that this discourse was written was in terms of this is how all pashtuns are right there was no visibility for other aspects of the Pashtun identity and reality and definitely no visibility of women uh, either and the sort of agency that they had. No problem, problem Nasrullah Khan Wazir. Um, I think your question was brilliant. Acha Maliha ke ani the policy policy exclusiveness. Maliha, um, um, to answer uh, your comment, to answer to your comment, um, I think this is a very uh, incorrect way of looking at reality i think jo intersectionality hai ethnicity ki class ki religion ki caste ki um uh, wo intersectionality agar aap appreciate na kare aur uska analysis aap na kare in how certain uh, people um are oppressed in this country then i think aapka analysis bahut limited hoga aur wo bahut uh, flawed hoga uh, because um there are uh, 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 agar 
uh, class is a very big issue. I mean, as uh, as a socialist organization, because this is on WDF's page, we do talk about class as a very big issue. And I think that is what our politics is all about. But I think uh, to not appreciate that when ethnicity is an ethnically oppressed group, or jab ek, uh, um, ki collaboration, uh, ki, uh, sorry, a uh, working class banda, jo ke bal, b, uh, working class bhi ho, or baloch bhi ho, ya working class ho, or pashtun bhi ho, to wo jo oppression hai, wo ek double oppression ho jati hai, wo ek zyada intense oppression ho jati hai, um, because uske andar do oppressive identity, oppressed identities, or do oppressive structures aa jate hai, right? So I think we can't just simply uh, say ke nahi nahi, let's just look at one and not look at the other. Uh, I think that's like saying that you just you should just look at ethnicity and you shouldn't look at class, right? I think um, intersectionality is very important in understanding how oppressive structures um, work. Uh, apart from that, as far as um, Pashtuns ki jo baat hai, missing persons ki and military establishment ki. I think ye baat maine kar di hai ki Pashtuns jo, uh, jo military ke andar Pashtuns hain, they are collaborators with um, the national bourgeoisie uh, because they benefit from the system. They benefit from the kind of um, uh, kya kehte hai, social capital they have, the, you know, the kind of economic benefits they get, the kind of privilege they have, the kind of corridors of power they can access, right? So there are Pashtuns in the military and they do collaborate um, with uh, with other groups within the military. And that is something that Pashtuns do talk about. They talk about uh, people, um, they uh, you know, there's a, there, there's a poem, a poem. Uh, there's a couplet in a poem that says, "Ma khovel che ka medan ta ba dushman radrumi, khuda khu akhpalwan haragali di grana." Right. So that basically means that I thought that only only my enemies will come to the battlefield. But when I entered the battlefield, when I got to the battlefield, I saw that you know my my uh, my own my own blood was also there, right? My my companions, my friends were also there. So I think that beautifully summarizes this whole idea that um, your own people can also be collaborators in oppressive, uh, in the oppressive structures that are unleashed on you and not just in the military establishment, but also in political circles. There are many parties, Pashtun parties that are now speaking up against atrocities against Pashtuns, but were very much quiet when these atrocities were happening and only started speaking up when PTM came in to existence. So um, it's wonderful that the PTM is calling them out. Um, I don't, uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I think that both can't be, um, both have to go hand in hand. Yeah, so basically what Minerva also said is the same thing. Um, that yes, while PTM is, I mean, yeah, this is something that we need to realize. PTM is one of many um, uh, political expressions of Pashtun, um, uh, what do you call it? Political expressions of Pashtun resistance to, um, to the state. It is not the only expression to um, uh, uh, expression of Pashtun resistance to the state. There can be many other forms of resistance coming from within the community towards the state. Um, that can be in terms of, um, that can take any form of um, a structure that can take any that can follow any kind of program. So I think that needs to be understood as well. Uh, that there are many maybe that PTM does not represent, right? And for that they need to form their own kind of um, movement, their own kind of resistance, and find um, because I mean, um, and have their own kind of niche. Um, Definitely, Minerva uh, <laughs> Murad Saeed is a uh, is definitely a collaborator and. Um, I did like have one of his statements uh, written down and I, I wasn't going to like say it, but I think I would love to now because the fact that you mentioned it. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen someone, um, you know, as aggressively shameless and um, aggressively um, 
loyal as well you know wonderfully um as murad said you know god bless people who have you know cheerleaders like murad said on their side because you know what else do you need but uh, murad said one i mean very recently while you know with his shrill little voice said that you know the straight the state has three main pillars the parliament the armed forces and the judiciary now god knows what kind of democratic system murad said is looking at uh lekin um kya keh sakte hain murad said ke bare mein so yeah i mean he must be given like a lot of power a lot of legitimacy a lot of uh, things you know that matter to people who um you know drunk with privilege and drunk with power um uh become so comfortable with that kind of privilege that they shed um, uh, you know that they just forego or just don't don't care about you know just being horrible uh human beings i have no academic word for like describing murad said but yes um i think he's he's one of uh, uh the many who have collaborated with with the dominant you know to um oppress the other govinda theek hai basit ali sahab uh, govinda is a legend but anyway that's not the point here um mehsood masid um uh we're always on the move because um uh, of um no set structures uh, existing i mean we do have resources we do have manpower we do have uh, ability but that ability hasn't been um given that has it hasn't been channeled um uh properly we haven't been given the working class hasn't been given any kind of power or or autonomy over um uh, themselves or the kind they haven't been given any kind of autonomy they haven't been given any kind of rights jo resources hain wo ek dominant elite ke hath mein hai um un subhon ke hath mein hai hi nahi uh, there are no opportunities there are no um education there's no education right i mean for example um while pashtuns are constantly being referred to as uneducated um यू नो जाहिल्स इस तरह की लैंग्वेज यूज की जाती है तो छली वाला है ये तो खान है ये तो जी यू नो इस तरह की भाई तो कपड़े बेचता है इस तरह की बातें होती हैं लेकिन कोई ये नहीं पूछता कि यू नो एक गांव में आपका स्कूल जो है वो किधर है और उस उस स्कूल को रीच करना उस स्कूल तक पहुंचना कितना मुश्किल है या कितना नहीं है या वहाँ पे इंडस्ट्री किस तरह की है वहाँ पे किस तरह की अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं और जब आप वही अपॉर्चुनिटीज ढूंढने किसी और शहर जाते तो जाते हो जहाँ पे आप एक ऑप्रेस्ड माइनॉरिटी हो तो वहाँ पे भी आपको किस तरह की रेजिस्टेंस मिलती है फ्रॉम द डोमिनेंट लीड टू यू नो वर्क और टू एग्जिस्ट और टू जस्ट होन योर स्किल्स एंड बी योर ओन पर्सन सो या आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी इवन मोर सो नाउ आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट टाइम टू बी अ पर्सून इन पाकिस्तान एंड uh especially for working class people uh, there exists a huge threat not just to their livelihoods but also to their lives as we have seen um mia saqib shah our pashtuns should we rely and stick to our past acha 5 minutes mein i'm going to end this uh because koi uh, uh, govinda ki films ka pooch raha hai mujhse uh, ya koi mujhe um, uh, afghani hone ke naam pe gaali de raha hai um uh, <laughs> I was I'm actually shocked that this didn't come sooner to be honest like I'm amazed at how many positive people are on here um and are being respectful lekin ji bilkul mai anyway um I think no the whole idea of this study circle was to say that we can't stick to our past that we have been made to stick to our past and stuck in our past aur hame aage nahi jaane diya gaya ki hamari existence ko hamari um hamare culture ko cement kar diya gaya jiski wajah se hamare liye aage nikalna uh bahut mushkil hai uh to yeah definitely uh, a step forward is needed
I'm just going to wait another three minutes um, if there are any more questions. I'll be taking one last question. <clears throat> On, I think on a concluding note, jo ke Georg or Minerva uh, baat kare the, I think it's something that I'm going to sit and um, obviously think about as well. But I think ke ek, uh, PTM either needs to collaborate with working class people and talk about working class issues more in a clear manner. Um, because I feel like uh, jo ke, um, I, do, I do obviously agree that the basic unki survival is in question that maybe they haven't moved on to a point where they talk about working class struggles, right? Um, but I do feel that uh, working class ke engage karna aur unki demands aage rakna would be a wonderful way to make the movement more sophisticated and also make it more holistic. Um, if that can't be done, of course, uh, like I said, ke, you know, uh, uh, working class ek alag apna wo kar sakti hai because I do feel ke the Pashtun working class um, has many unique issues, right? So, for example, abhi kisi ne upar baat ki thi ke um, uh, uh, migration ka masla aja hai, right? Ke uh, they have to move to other cities and not just cities, they have to move to other countries and literally stay in those countries for years and years. Unke bache ho jat, uh, uh, bache bade ho jate hai, uh, unko do do teen teen saal wo dekh nahi paate, you know. So what kind of, um, um, kya kehte hai? Like, what does that come with? What does that mean for the working class? I think that's the thing migration. Ki. Um, uske lava, um, jo baat ho gai, wo, um, security, ki baat ho gai, you know, mobility, ki baat ho gai, language. Ki baat ho gai. I think in this um, working class struggles, hai, uh, working class ki stereotyping, ho gai. Uh, jo ye struggles, hai in ki, sorry, access to education and access to, um, uh, you know, um, even information about jobs, even uh, access to like the job market even, right? So I think these are very unique issues, um, not very unique, but some are very unique issues. Uh, and I think um, if you tie that back to how how there's a lack of op opportunities in a Pashtun dominated lands, right? Uh, I think uh, there could possibly be a working class movement either within um, either a subsection of the PTM or completely separate from the PTM with their own demands. And I think that's very, very important um, in order to uh, move forward with the whole um, agenda of who a Pashtun is and how they want to be you know how how they want to exist within the framework of pakistan with their own set of demands and with obviously um making the state account holding the state accountable for the kind of oppressive capitalist structures that have been imposed on what was a very egalitarian society Uh, Talharzak, uh, working class, bilkul Urdu bolti hai. Hamari working class to Pashto bolti hai. Uh, mujhe, uh, honestly, is baat pe bohat sharmingi hai ki meri Urdu, um, itni achi nahi hai. Um, aur is liye, is baat pe mein khair kaam kar rahi hoon ki mein, mein apni Urdu better karu. Uh, kuch comrades se tips and tricks bhi le rahi hoon and I am working on it. Um, Pashto mein mein bilkul baat kar sakti hoon lekin uh, mujhe bas yeh mein soos ho raha tha ki yeh jo uh, Pashtuns ka jo narrative hai yeh um, agar mein um, you know, uh, because PTM bhi jo baate karta hai, generally jo narratives nikalte hai uh, from within Pashtuns, wo Pashto ke andar hi hote hai and aksar mistranslate ho jate hai, aksar, you know, uh, ye jo age, matlab is tarah ki, um, kya kehte hai, uh, <clears throat> power players hote hai, mistranslate karke, misquote kar dete hai logo ko, to mujhe tha ki mein ek aisi language mein kar dun, jis mein uh, sabko, um, you know, ke ek, um, um, Pashtuns ke lava logo ko samaj aaja hai. Toh mene is liye Pashto mein nahi kiya ya study circle. Uh, Inshallah, uh, koshish mein daichi balbur tawai pa Pashto shi kama. Um, da chai akhpal chai mi jayki mkhalt ti agde pura haan di razi uta da raza roori du chai agde haan. Um, pa akhpal arjaba shi da tule khabar e urwi. Um, I basically said I'll, it's very important for them to, you know, um, be also like, um, uh, see, I can't translate back and forth. Anyway, um, but yeah, abhi maine angrezi mein ki hai. Inshallah, umid hai ke um, ek waqt aayega jab main ye sara study circle Urdu mein kar sakungi aur um, achhe tarikese. <clears throat>